Welp, it's another overcast day here in Florida. The weather is turning, not quite 100% there yet. We're not quite to the beautiful days in Florida. We had like one or two, I really thought we were there, but we're not there. Anyway, we are back to work on the K-swapped Sephiro build. So we've got a lot done to this thing already. Where'd I put the engine? Engine's over here. Still waiting on the head from the machine shop. Once that is here, uh, we can put the engine back together, test fit it in the car, our trans is on the way. I mean, we got everything we need on the way to get the engine assembled in the car and start plumbing and wiring. However, we don't have it all yet, so that's kind of a problem. But fortunately, there's uh, plenty of other stuff we need to do. So last episode, we got the rear suspension wrapped up. So we've got all new arms, new bushings, new ball joints. We painted everything, dual caliper, five lug hubs, brake lines and such. So we still got to put the rear coilovers in and do a couple things back here, but the rear is essentially wrapped up and we are moving on to the front end. So we've got a lot of stuff to do up here as well. Basically the same amount as the front with some more fab work included. So first step, First order of business is to get all this stuff stripped out so we can start working on it. going to be using that. All right, one side basically complete. I'm going to go ahead. Well, I still got to get the coilover out. I'm going to knock the other side out. Well, I'll leave this in for now. We've got new coilovers coming, but they're not here yet. Knock the other side out. Then we got to work on the subframe, getting the subframe out because we got to modify the subframe, relocate the steering rack. We got a bunch to do. So I'm going to get the other side done. Then we'll continue on with the rest. Sandy, you come after all the hard work's done. I already got it apart. Now you want to come do your job? Supervisor Sandy, important for duty, late every day. You know, if I was late every day, you'd fire me. Yeah. Sandy, tell me about your new hoodie. Yeah, it's really cool. I know. Well, it's actually pretty warm, Sandy. It's warm. <laughs> so it didn't dawn on me that uh, everywhere but Florida, pretty much, it's uh, already getting cold. So I didn't have any hoodies as far as merch goes. So I did come out with a hoodie. Um, so it's gonna be live on the website for pre-order. The shirts are coming in. They'll be shipping out. We'll have some of those in stock as well for every size, every um, design. So if you haven't got one yet on the pre-order, uh, you can buy them when they come in stock here shortly. And all the pre-orders will be going out soon. And again, pre-order is live for, we'll do it for like a week for the uh, Sandy hoodie. Yes, the I'm telling them about it. I'm telling them about it, it's okay. All right, let's get back to work. Well, boys, that was quite the process. Typical hammer the side, that didn't work. I tried hammering the top with the nut on, that didn't work. So I finally came up with a method in the uh, press where I just basically put a socket on the back side and pressed down and it finally popped. This is what we ended up with, more, more of the story here. Tie rod, other piece of tie rod, other piece of tie rod, but we got it done. We persevered. We've got the knuckles off, our control arms off, our sway bar brackets. This is the stuff we are keeping out of this, all the stuff we pulled on, which isn't much, or pulled on, pulled off. Now, next order of business, we need to get the steering rack out, drain the power steering system, get that out of there, out of the way, because I, we're not gonna be using that pump, and uh, drop the subframe out, drop the rack out, and then we are done with teardown, for now at least. <laughs> Be able to pull 
pull the whole system out now. I do it from the top so I don't get smashed in the face. Boom. All in one shot. Alrighty, well, we got all of the front suspension out of the car. Very satisfying to see it all stripped down. We got everything yanked out of the chassis and over here assorted on the bench. We got our control arms, our knuckles, our steering rack, our sway bar brackets, and our subframe. So we're gonna be moving our rack mounting points forward to prevent over centering. I'll kind of explain that as we get into it. We're gonna be extending and notching our lower control arm. There's, there's, there's a lot, there's a lot. Uh, how about we just get started and uh, I'll explain as we go get to it. All right, so I've got my top cuts roughly marked out. I extended it a little bit. We're gonna be cutting right at an inch out. Now, the reason for this, oh man, can I demonstrate this? This is gonna be tricky. So when a knuckle is modified, here's your ball joint, here is your tie rod pickup point. So your tie rod goes here, it steers the knuckle. Now all the basic of what you're doing when you modify a knuckle is moving this pickup point closer to the pivot point. So what that does is an inch here, say it moves it that much, right? But an inch here moves it a lot further. I mean, that's r really the, the very basics of what you're doing. Now, the problem with that is your rack was here. Now you've moved your pickup point forward. So your rack is still back here. Your pickup point is here. And what can happen is when you steer, you get past the center point. I'm gonna do this without a good illustration, but basically it'll, it'll bind up at angle. So it'll go to angle and kind of get stuck there because as you try to pull it back, you're past the center point and you're basically wanting to pull it further instead of pulling it back. So that's the whole purpose of this. You move the pickup point in, we move the rack forward to match it. It's not, we're not gonna be able to move the rack as far forward as the pickup point will likely be, um, but it's close and it prevents those kinds of issues. So we're gonna clean up some of this paint and uh, get to cutting. All right, we got it cut out. I, I mean, the plasma cutter cut super clean. That's the cleanest I've ever cut with a plasma cutter. Basically, we're gonna cut down to this line here on the top and the bottom, trim all this up, and then push our mounting point forward. Start trying to grind her down, put her back together. All right, I went ahead and test fit the rack in here. As you can see, it gets pretty close to the uh, engine mount. I'm just trying to make sure I don't, don't start welding this thing in and then find out that something doesn't fit somewhere. So otherwise this looks about right. I think it might be a little out of square. We'll have to double check that. I got it perfectly squared up both directions. So I went ahead and just tacked it. I didn't want to risk it moving on me. So we got that in place. Um, so it'll be nice to have a plate there just for that to rub the ground and nothing else. So I wanted to get it kind of tacked in before I made these little plates to go in these corners, just so everything was kind of a consistent uh, measurement. So I'm gonna try to cut those and get those tacked in now. And then we can just weld the whole thing out.
subframe is all tacked together. I need a wire wheel everywhere I couldn't get to with the flat disc. Alrighty, our subframe is fully welded up. We've got our little freaking patch pieces and everything. It's about as complete as it needs to get, you know? <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is go ahead and throw a quick coat of paint on this. Bada boom, subframe is welded, painted, and relocated. Ha, <laughs> that rhymed. It looks good. I'm really happy with it. I don't like this paint as much as the other paint I have. I'm, whenever I go to Walmart next, I'm gonna hope they have my favorite paint again because it just comes out a little nicer, but it came out good. It came out good, more of an OE look with this one. So anyway, now that that's done, I wanna go ahead and get the subframe back in the car and get the rack back in the car and just make sure everything fits because we went about as aggressive as we could on the relocation and I want to make sure the rack clears here and everything hooked up. Got some new bushings. Let's throw this all back together and see if everything fits before we move on to the rest of our fabrication, cutting, modifying adventure of the day. <laughs> our new poly rack bushings. All right, let's toss this up for you, man. leg off this shield. I'm gonna to try to keep the shield though. This, I mean, it's kind of pointless. It would normally be on the exhaust side, so it covers the boot, but for us, it's not on the exhaust side of the K-Series, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna to try to retain it anyway. Subframe, reinstalled, steering rack, reinstalled with new bushings. Everything fits as it should. Sweet. Stoked on that. Definitely, uh, you know, one of those things. Easy to mess up. Glad we didn't. It doesn't appear that we have messed it up. I don't want to say we didn't yet because you know how that goes. Okay, now that the subframe is in, reinstalled, we still need to pull the tie rods out of the steering rack, but we're not worried about that right now. We're going to tool cart back over here because it's time to move on to the lower control arm. So what we need to do, cut these angle stops off. We need to cut it right around here and extend it one inch. One down, one to go. All right, we need to throw a quick coat of paint on these and we gotta paint the knuckles, we gotta do it. Can't, you know, we painted the rear knuckles, painted everything else, we gotta paint the knuckles. So I'm gonna get these cleaned up, throw a coat of paint on these, let it dry. I'm not gonna extend the uh, lower control arms just yet. I'll explain why when we're installing it, but we're gonna see how things go like this. I have to remind myself that this is a street car first and foremost and fun to drive second and like performance is like fourth or fifth. Looks third, performance fourth, fifth. Fun to drive is key. Comfortable to drive on the street, streetable, not super annoying, not burning up tires for camera wear, all that stuff, high on the list. So I'll explain once we're putting it together why we may not need to extend the lower control on it. So we did go ahead and cut the angle stops off. So let's get some paint on this stuff, if we have enough left, that is. All right, well, my can of spray paint just stopped working halfway through. So I had to run to Walmart, get some more spray paint. They had one can of my favorite one. This stuff is really, really good. It comes out super glossy, super durable. Um, I couldn't find it last time I was there. I had to use the other one. 
Um, and then I got this. I don't know if I've tried this yet or not, but we're gonna use this on this stuff because I think it'll be a little less glossy than that one and kind of match everything else better since we had to use the non-glossy uh, other brand one. So, okay, we can actually finish spray painting these now and move back on to work while they dry and all the back and forth. That, uh, that seems to be very similar to the other kind. The replacement I got, the Krylon, it's like super thin. You had to just glue, like, cake it on there to get a decent coat. This stuff, you gotta be careful not to do too thick of a coat. Uh, so we'll see how the finish looks. I'm curious if it's as glossy as the other one, but either way. We need to move on to the steering rack while we wait for this stuff to dry. <laughs> just kidding. We're not moving on to the rack yet because I forgot a crucial component when I put the steering rack back in that I forgot last time. So when I originally swapped in this S13 subframe, I forgot to put these on. These are subframe spacers. So they're gonna go above the subframe and space it down to give us clearance from the valve cover to the hood because the K-Series is a very tall engine. And they, with the oil pan and the mount kit, it's as low as it can be to the subframe. Can't go any lower there. So to get it low enough, we're dropping the subframe down. This comes with the Toge factory swap kit. Like I said, I forgot to install them the first time and Part of the reason for like pulling it out and doing the rack relocation now was so I'd remember to put these back in. And I didn't remember to put them back in. The bright side, uh, at least I remember now, not later. So I gotta yank the subframe about halfway back out and try to put these in real quick. Wow. It's probably because I always try to clean it with my shirt. Now we can move on to the steering rack side of things, which begins with pulling our tie rods out. You can buy cheap pliers if you want. One thing you should buy a nice version of is these. Nipex Cobras. Nipex, I always forget how you're supposed to pronounce it. These things are incredible. They're like 30 bucks, but they grab anything. I just undid that tie rod with them. And they lock at the adjustment. I put a link, well, I put a link to all the tools I use on Amazon below. So if you're ever interested in a tool I use, it's probably in the links down below. This thing definitely needed new tie rods all around. All right, enters are out. Let me show you what we got to go back on. So here is our old junk, our old outer inner tie rod combination deal. We've got our GK Tech Roll Center Correction Kit. I'll explain this a little more as we put it on. It'll make more sense than it sitting here on the bench. We've got their super adjustable inner tie rods. You can see normally tie rods are threaded about this far. These are threaded all the way down. So no matter what setup you're working with, you can probably cut this to length and make it work. So that's pretty cool. We know we've got the right size, and I've got two pairs of those. We've got their inner tie rod spacers, so these are the straight ones because we relocated the rack. If we didn't relocate the rack, this is what we would have to use. So this would bolt onto the steering rack, like where the tie rod would go, and then the tie rod would thread on here, essentially doing the same thing, moving it forward. The problem is, with these, is they put a lot of stress on the rack. There's a lot of leverage there. I've had them on Zs and I just went through so many racks. I just destroyed them. So I didn't even want to bother with that with this car. I just went straight to relocating the rack. I know it's going to be hard to find a replacement right-hand drive rack, so I'm trying to keep it alive as long as I can. We also have some spherical SPL outer tie rods. I'll be the first to admit this is not the right choice for a street car. However, I assumed you needed sphericals to work with these. You don't. I could have used stock ones. So whenever these wear out, I'll put some stock ones on. Stock outer tie rod ends work fine in, in most cases. So that is enough blabbering. Uh, it's time to start getting this stuff on the car. By that time, the paint should be drying. We can put all that on and see how much angle this thing has. So let's get back to work. A little bit of blue thread locker never hurt anybody, except the guy who has to take it apart. <laughs> Probably gonna be me. There we go. So as you can see, this spacer right here is going to allow the rack to go further into itself. This is the stop. The inside flange of this tie rod stops it. 
So we're spacing that out about five millimeters. Allows their extra travel further, which gets you more angle. It ain't all that scientific. So we'll come through and do a final check. I'm just gonna snug these up for now. Go decently tight so I don't forget. These ones you definitely want some lock tight on. It's really more of an issue on the offset spacers because there's so much leverage on them. They just want to tear themselves apart. The worst thing about putting tie rods in is they're never perfectly straight when you get them. So, like if you try to thread them in from the shank, it's like, it doesn't work. You gotta do it from up here. One thing we are missing is some inner tie rod boots. Realistically, I shouldn't have put Loctite on these so I could take them off to cut them. All right, tie rods are in. All right, we got our knuckles back from uh, the local powder coater, Taylor's powder coating via spray paint. <laughs> they are dry enough, dryish. It's always so satisfying taking the taking the tape off a metal part after you've painted it. It's all shiny still. All right, so what we need to do is install these guys. So basically, it's just gonna go in just like that. We're gonna tighten this. Put our nuts on. All right, now we just need to torque and tighten everything down and the knuckles will be ready to go back on the car. Dun, dun. Da! All right, anyway, enough messing about. Let's put this stuff on the car. Oh, jeez. Wild. My new coilover should be here tomorrow. We can get those on front and rear, which will be nice. Some fresh, long travel drift spec BCs on here. So the reason we don't need to extend our control arm, or I don't think we do, is because the way this works, this angle adapter, is it's basically as if we're extending our control arm because it moves the pickup point out, like, I don't, I don't know the exact dimension, but, you know, 30, 40 mil. And not only that, but it brings it up. Now what that does, that is essentially roll center correction. So when you lower a car, your control arms tend to angle up and then your roll center is like, in the ground, which is where the two points intersect. So what this does is this essentially spaces the control arm down at the same ride height, keeping it closer to level on a lowered car. That's your roll center correction. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and throw the other side on to this point, because after that, we're gonna need to make sure we center our rack, cut our inner tie rods, put our outer tie rods on, and then we'll be able to see just how much angle the old GK Tech kit gives us. All right, we've got our rack perfectly centered. So now we can figure out how long to cut our tie rod. You get the idea, pretty logical. We'll get our outer tie rods kind of in position and figure out where we want to cut each tie rod. And we ordered the wrong tie rods. Dang it, <laughs> these are way too big. Well, so much for that. Kind of a bummer, but I kind of would rather use the uh, stock style tie rods anyway. So we're just gonna roll with that. Uh, I'm gonna have to order a new pair of them, but I have this one I can use to at least get the tie rod cut out and see how much angle it has. That's all I want. Moment of truth, gotta cut these tie rods down. All right, tie rods are cut back in. I went ahead and pulled them off the car to do this. I can cut so much better with a bandsaw, especially cutting bolts, because you can kind of cut just right in the middle of the threads. Way easier to not have a jagged, crooked edge. Okay, well, we didn't cut enough off. So cut it a little bit shorter and cut the other one, but for now, this will give us what we need. See how much angle we have. Holy cow, dude, that's a lot. That is a lot of angle for a little, literally a bolt-on bracket. Like that is wild. Obviously it's kind of hard to get a good frame of reference because we don't have a wheel or a rotor on, but I mean, you can tell how much. I mean, it's about like that. Probably it's gotta be 60 degrees. Let's spin it the other way. See what it looks like. I'm gonna have to recenter the rack, but worth it. And clean up this power steering fluid. Okay. 
Jeez Louise, dude, look at that. That is a lot of angle. That is a really, like you don't, you don't need any more angle than that. That's for sure, especially not a freaking street car. Sweet, all right, let's recenter it now so I don't forget. So yeah, unfortunately, I need to get some new tie rods to finish this up. As of right now, kind of stalled out, but we do still have some more suspension stuff to do. We've got the sway bar. It's a, again, a blade style sway bar. So we'll be kind of cutting and fitting that and getting the most out of our angle. We've got our tension rods. Those need to go on. We need to weld a brace in between our tension rod brackets here. That'll be a fun little project. Get those painted, get all that done, get all that sorted out. And my BC coilovers will be here tomorrow as well. So we'll be able to tackle all that tomorrow. The hubs, rotors, getting all that stuff done and then we'll be pretty much completely finished up with the suspension and the timing for that works out perfect because I got the call that the head will be ready tomorrow at the machine shop. So I can go pick the head up. We have everything we need as far as I know <laughs> to finish the engine, put the engine together and the trans just showed up. I had it shipped to BC. So that just showed up today as well. Uh, so we have the trans. So, I mean, once the engine's together, we've got the trans, boom, boom. We can put the engine in the car, start wiring. I've got the wiring stuff. So, I mean, we're moving right along. Everything's kind of falling into place perfectly. Like right as we wrap up with the last suspension project, we'll be diving back into the juice of it with the engine and all that stuff. So I'm stoked. Like could not be going better, but as you can see, it's dark outside. <laughs> that's, uh, that's gonna be it for this one. That's gonna be it for this one. I hope to see you guys for the next one, but for now, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Goodbye.